power of Ginger Jones. Oh, you were good. You were good. Let's take a look now at the tail of the tape for Roy Jones Jr. and Mike McCallum. And as you can see, there's a 12-year age difference. McCallum a half inch taller and has four inches in reach advantage, which will mean nothing in this bout because his job is to get inside of Roy Jones' speed and power. Punch that numbers, Larry. Here's what Jones did against James Tony two years ago when he won the 168-pound title. These, this was an average round for him. And of course, Jones doesn't throw a lot of jabs, throws mostly power punches. Now let's take a look at some McCallum numbers. When he fought Tony five years ago, you saw that he was throwing 73 punches around. When he lost the light heavyweight championship to Tioza, the Frenchman, just a year and a half ago, his numbers we're already coming down. Rules of the bout with uh, himself, Aaron. <laughs> the Roy Jones Jr. Mike McCallum fight is scheduled for 12 rounds. There is no standing gate count. No three knockdown rule in this fight. Only the referee can stop the fight, and you can be saved by the belt in the 12th final round only. Jim, now let's go up to ring announcer Mark Hero for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, Garrett Productions and Square Ring Incorporated in association with HBO Sports and Budweiser, the undisputed King of Beers presents from the Ice Palace in Tampa, Florida, my hometown, main event, fire on ice, 12 rounds for the vacant WBC Light Heavyweight Championship Ring officials assigned by the World Boxing Council, President Jose Suleiman, Supervisor Juan Sanchez. Your judges at ringside are from Miami, Florida, Rick Bays. Also from Miami, Paul Herman. And from Tallahassee, Florida, Jay Cassis. Your third man in the ring, referee from Tampa, Florida, Brian Gary. And we told you about the other three judges, the ones who will score the bout for the WBC, Marty Denkin, Tommy Kazmarek, and Barbara Perez, sitting not at ringside, but rather in the front row and craning their necks to get a good view. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing now the principals first in the red corner to my left, wearing the red trunks, black trim, weighing 173 pounds. He is undefeated in 33 professional bouts, 29 wins by way of knockout. He hails from Pensacola, Florida. Thank you. 
Lord from the mic. Good morning, gentlemen. All right, gentlemen, I'll be the third man in the ring with you this evening in charge of this WBC World Championship bout at all times. I want you to obey my command to break. If you score a knockdown, go to the neutral corner. Do not come out till I signal. Protect yourself at all times. Don't use your head as a weapon. No rabbit punches or low blows. Shake hands. Come out boxing at the bell. Jim, a boxing man once said about mismatches, the whole world is a mismatch. Roy Jones has certainly made most of his fights mismatches. Can he do it to a crafty veteran like McCallum? And we told you about the microphone, which has been sewn into George's trunk. Or, I mean, uh, you into Roy's trunk. You've had one in your trunk for a long time, right, George? So uh, at some point in this first round, we'll open up the Roy Jones microphone that's in his trunks and see what we hear. The Roy Jones strategy should be go out there and do what you can do and do it quick. Move up a few more pounds and you can be heavyweight champ of the world. Don't take a long time doing it to make people doubt. You mean light heavyweight champion of the world? No, he can move up a few pounds. The other guy want to be heavyweight champ of the world. I have to go up about 30 or 40 pounds. That's what he's trying to do. Now, McCollum should jab this guy to the body, stay to the body, and make him pay for those extra pounds that he's put on. Yeah, Seven. coming up from 168 to 175, so McCollum will want to make him feel it early. Yeah, jab him to the body. Every chance you get, touch his body. Boy Jones expected by those around him to be cautious in the first few rounds because of his great respect for McCallum's savvy and his ring skills and his counter-punching ability. On the other hand, they say if McCallum makes a mistake, Roy will show no mercy. Roy Jones, when his back touches those ropes, he start doing anything he can, so you got to be careful. Do what you're going to do to him in the middle of the ring. Don't go following him on those ropes. Jones keeping his eyes trained to the middle of McCallum's chest and throwing a left to the lower body. Near the belt line, he landed a right hand over the top about 20 seconds ago. And let's take a listen to the Roy Jones mic. It's in his trunks. Graphic audio on the body shots. Now you can hear that punch to the body. McCollum on a good left jab. And remember, it doesn't look like much in the first couple of rounds, but if he can continue to do this, it'll pay off. He can slow Roy's pace and get him into a more deliberate engagement if he keeps landing to the body. That's what he's been doing to opponents throughout his long career. Colin has to be careful though, when you go up down, you got to bring that left hand back up quick. This is the most conventional three minutes of work we've seen out of Roy Jones in a long time. Mostly working off the jabs in a very orthodox fashion, throwing straight left jabs and right hands. We haven't seen any of those triple and quadruple left hooks, which have defined his work against lesser opponents. Roy Jones loses very few rounds. That was one of them. I don't know if Ray was paying homage to a great old pro in that place, yeah, but it's time for him to make this a fight in the present and not from the past. Maybe he's not all that comfortable working in such a conventional fashion. By punch that numbers, George Foreman, he threw 15 jabs in the first round and only landed one of them. He's short with the jab so far. And McCallum is stepping in and committing more to the jab when he throws it. That's right, but at the same time, Roy Jones' cone is picked up on McCullum leaving that left hand down when he jabs. And this boy can make you pay. Roy Jones can make you pay for dropping your hand. As he just did there with a counter right over the top of McCallum's jab. And now Roy begins to step in just a little bit more aggressively as the battery pack for his microphone reaches up out of the back of his shorts. 
Jones. Good right hand to the body by Roy Jones. Now he starts to lead with the left hook, as he's done more frequently in the past couple of years. And McCallum going to the body. Got in two good shots. Great right landed for Jones. But Jones kind of reaching with these shots, not really stepping in behind him. That left hand of McCullum is long as all outdoors, and he just lays it there in the stomach. If he keeps it up and don't be lazy with it, he can do a lot of damage in the next couple of years. Italy McCallum is following his fight plan. Roy Jones lands a right cross. McCallum takes it pretty well. Now McCallum is throwing that left jab to the chest of Roy Jones. Jones mic open. That's why you're hearing these body shots so graphically. Jones landed a little left hook in there. Right hand missed, but the left landed flush on McCallum's chin. McCallum goes back to the body to good effect. Jones lands upstairs, like 
McCallum lands downstairs. You're not jabbing, you you too static in front of him. You too static in front of him. Like and you went over there, yeah. you went just a little and oh ping, ping, right to it, anywhere, okay? Right man. Come back down to the body, run across, turn around. Right. When he turned, he's sitting there waiting on him. Microphone is gone. Nope. They're going to put it back on it. I think. Couldn't tell whether Coach Herkerson got it back in there or not. You know, all of the whirling dervish of Roy Jones, all of the rat a tat tat, that sensational stuff, completely neutralized by a great old pro. Regardless of what happens in this play. Let history state that trunk Mike lasted three rounds. Hard right hand over the top by Jones. Jones looking for more and more creative solutions against Mike McCallum. Yeah, Roy Jones has got to step up the beat a little bit to take away some of the confidence and make McCollum an opponent. You got to just can't let him think he's in here to win. Make him think like an opponent by hitting him with a lot of hit shots. I thought I heard McCallum's corner man suggesting to him that he was showing Jones too much respect. Both fighters have good reason to show respect. Roy's plotting something here. He makes the same feint twice gets you to miss the same punch twice. He's thinking of what comes next. Yeah, that looks... There it was. Straight right hand counter. And another. This reminds me, or could remind all of us of the night when people thought Sugar Ray Robinson was going to pull a rabbit out of a hat when he went up against a fine light heavyweight champion. Willie Maxson. Willie Maxson. Joey, round up. Joey Maxson. Round out the round. People kept thinking, Ray is going to do something. Nothing ever happened. Big contrast you see here is veteran light heavyweight against a guy moving up to his weight class, huh? So you gotta know what you're doing when you face a big man. You gotta win. Stop trying to knock him out. Make him think too. Of course, McCallum spent much of his career at 154, eventually moved to 160. Later part at 168, 175 is, is a function for him of getting older and a little bit more settled in his body type. What we can say for sure is that McCallum is posing some questions and some answers to Roy Jones that he hasn't been able to deal with here. I mean, this is amazing. I think that McCallum is winning the fight. BC judges agree with Harold. They all have Roy Jones winning the fight. To this point. We may have a great controversy by the end of this night. I thought we already did. <laughs> Only if it goes to a decision. Can you imagine a controversial ending in boxing? I try. <laughs> Gallum's going to the body again. After every combination. Oh, a good right hand by Jones. And the left hand, and McCallum has suddenly stopped in his tracks as Jones brings his punching power and speed to bear. And McCallum delivers just a little low, and Roy does a dance for uh, McCallum's benefit. 
I think they like each other, incidentally. Is it hard to fight a guy that you really like, George? Well, yeah, not really. It's all a game anyway. And McCollum is turning into an opponent whenever Roy Jones land those power punches. He makes McCollum think he is an opponent. You got to keep it up. go into the body, giving McCallum a little of his own medicine. I think that's the best way for Roy to change this up, George, that's is right. to go downstairs. And he can win these rounds. You're not going to get a knockout that easy. You're going to have to earn it. He might have to satisfy himself with the decision tonight. It would be a good idea to take some starch out of McCallum. Of course, low blows will do it for you if you're allowed to get away with it. I thought that was a good left hook. Mike McCallum... 16 years as a pro has never been stopped. Good right hand by McCallum. It was a tip, but it was good. This time McCallum taking advantage of the clean opening to go to the body with the right hand. Roy Jones sneaks in a right. McCallum able to handle Jones's punching power so far. It's because of the extra weight. Jones has got to concentrate on the body a little bit to make those punches count. That time McCallum's right hand over the top, partially blocked. Jones taking advantage of the opportunities to counter, but not going to the body. And there he did with the right hand and got in a perfect left hook as a result. Great combination by Jones there. His combinations are starting to pick up a bit. He's starting to get his range as the rounds go by. When he mixes in the body punches, he gets opportunities upstairs. That right hand, come, left right combination, that hurt McCollum. Yep. Best punch of the fight, best round of the fight for Jones. McCollum could have allowed this fight to get away from him by not establishing a superior reach and keeping those combinations from Jones at a minimum. We've allowed this guy to wake up, man. It's hard to put a sleeping giant back to sleep. It's hard to sustain dominance for 12 consecutive rounds against a guy who clearly has more athletic gifts at this moment in his career. Now, Rod Jones is doing a lot of movement, and he's thinking combination as when he stands flat foot. Callum pounding to the body with the right hand. Jones with a quick little left hook in there. Once again in this round, Roy has not been going downstairs and consequently hasn't gotten much chance for higher combinations. Max McCallum up with a straight right to the chest. Now he has McCallum thinking about throwing that right hand. Once you start thinking, you're in trouble. You gotta just do it. Jones just a tiny bit short with that right cross. And he's finding the range with power punches. He landed 25 out of 36 of them in the last round. When you're fighting a boxer like Roy Jones Jr., the most devastating thing you can do to him is out-jab him, especially jab to the head. Yeah, but that's what you do. You take that jab away from him by out-jabbing him. But, yeah, but the thing about Roy, you know, is that he really doesn't throw the jab that often. He's, he has his own unorthodox style. He throws more power punches than jabs, and that's precisely why I think McCallum is exposing him a bit here. He, he doesn't have to worry too much about the jab. Jones started out throwing jabs and fighting from an orthodox stance with an orthodox style in the first two rounds, and since then has reverted to form, leading as often as not with the left hook or a straight right over the top. That's a feat boxers 
and hand, they just hate to be hit with left hand. Mm -hmm. And McCallum is sticking it. Yeah, you hit them in the body, they don't mind. You hit them with a good right hand every now and then, but don't jab me. That's what's happening to uh, Roy Jones tonight. Jones punctuates the round with a left hook and a right cross. Maybe enough to persuade the judges to think of him one more time as they mark their scores. Hey, the word. Hey, deep breath. Do that call. I got you. I got you. Yes. Yeah. All right. Mix your power up a little bit. Just up. Mix your power up. Okay. Touching light. Touching stone. Light stone. Just keep mixing up. All right. Keep mixing up. When you're going through three-point combinations, don't go to the head all the time. Come down. Change up. Then back up. Gotcha. Okay. Change the combinations up. Bring it. Bring it. Come on. Come on. Ready, Michael, bring it. You're shocking the world, baby. Keep it Ready, up. Ready, come on. Right. Big one. Let's go. Big one. The more this is like this. Yeah. Get the judges excuse for you to win the fight. Give it to the judges. They need to win the judges. Number seven, halfway home now. Boy, number seven. Right about now, I'm starting to think of, well, what would Roy Jones look like against Leonard and Hagler and Hearns? If, if he's having this much trouble looking good against a nearly 40-year-old McCallum, I think that's a legitimate question that may be asked after this fight is over. Well, particularly since McCallum said yesterday, widely quoted around the world, Roy Jones is better than all those guys. He's twice as good as they were. Well, it doesn't cost him anything to say that. <laughs> particularly not the way he's holding his own tonight. Jones finding his own punch out to it limited as McCallum goes to the body. Jones stuns McCallum momentarily with the left hook. Roy smiling in there now as he gets ready to go back to work. Power punch combination starting to land more frequently again for Roy Jones. Walked cautiously through the first few rounds. And now lands a right hand straight off the top. Body punch. Roy Jones is, is moving exclusively to McCallum's left hand. And McCallum cannot position his feet enough to protect himself. Roy Jones caught on to it. He's going to exploit this guy. He can neutralize McCallum's jab by moving to his right. Yeah, McCallum just doesn't seem to have a proper movement. Only when Jones moves to his right can he even jab effectively. Attempting to get the crowd a little bit more involved. He does some of his own cheerleading in the ring. Oh, that's quick. And it was a pot shot. Solid left hook in there. McCallum's taking these punches pretty well. But Roy Jones is having a spectacular round seven. What happened was McCallum was able to turn it on top of that right hand with his own stretch to the side of the head of Jones. That trip around and made him inactive, so he should exploit it. Allen going back to the body as he corners Jones. Boy coming out with one of those whirlwind combos. would do better if he's not even think of a knockout. Just go out there and try to win the fight. Whenever he even thinks power, Roy Jones hits him three or four times. Round seven, a long and rough passage for Mike McCallum. Jones starting to assert himself. Would be at least even in this fight. And we'll check in with Harold Letterman in a little while, but in the meantime, I can tell you that through seven rounds, the three WBC judges all have Jones leading by reasonably comfortable margins, and as you can see, Harold Letterman is right there in the same ballpark with them. Either you two guys still think that uh, McCallum's winning the fight? No, 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 I don't think so. I think Jones has asserted himself in the, 
in the uh, last three rounds. You agree, George? Yeah, McCallum, he let the fight slip away. He had a chance to establish that the reach and everything. Now he's all, he's going to have to get himself a knockout. Because Jones found an adjustment that works for him. He's moving, and whenever he wants, he moves to McCallum's left, and he just doesn't know what to do. Yeah. Roy Jones, when he moves to his right, McCallum's left, in this direction, is able to keep McCallum from landing the jab and sets up combinations for himself. And left foot leads, and right cross leads, and footwork of the kind that you're seeing here. I think future opponents of Jones are going to be looking at this tape to see how to try to neutralize him and how to keep him from being the whirlwind that we have been celebrating. I got you, gentlemen. McCallum doesn't have any power if he throws when uh, Jones is on his left side. He has no power at all, but Jones seemed to pick up the evidence. Which is the soft power. Only momentarily. He's done it a lot in some of his previous bouts. Hadn't done it any substantial length of time here. But Jones has found himself an ice cream parlor when he moves to the left of McCallum. Who has? Nothing but sweet stuff happens over there. Why he likes to go into the corner and position himself there, although he does have a history of coming out of the corner with lightning combinations. But this gives McCallum a chance to be effective. I mean, he's stationary here, too. Well, McCallum is having difficulty, and every thinks of power, he just can't do it that way. You gotta think combinations, and there's no defense for combinations. There's only some defense when you think about throwing five, one hard punch. <laughs> relatively stationary Jones. The crowd seems disappointed that Roy allows this kind of stuff to go on. Give credit to the fighter that McCallum is as he takes a hard left and right hand from Jones. crowd in Tampa looking for the Florida favorite son to produce some of his customary fireworks and he has at moments during the fight. They have not had the same effect on Mike McCallum that they do on most of Roy Jones' opponents. McCallum, whenever he decides to put a four-punch combination together, he will see some good results. But waiting to hit Roy Jones with one shot is not going to help him. McCallum able to get to the body with the right hand, pause with the left. Jones once again goes back into the corner. Jones excites the crowd with a few power shots and then moves back into a cautious, defensive pose. Showing a lot of respect to 39-year-old Mike McCallum. Now Jones remembers to go to the body inside. Something he was neglecting to do early in the fight. Now McCollum, if he want to prove that he can do something, he's got to throw combinations now. At the age 39, he's got to think, hey, I better pull this thing out. There's no second chance for me. Shit is guys hitting me, but I used to spar with my trainer, Charlie Shack. He do the same stuff to me. I'm missing with one shot, he hit me with five. But you gotta use a combination back. Let's work. 
certainly the kind of fight that Mike McCallum might have wanted to get Roy Jones into. Is he doing enough? George Foreman says not quite. Oh, he's allowing this guy to get nothing but combination after combination off. When you're in there with those young opponents, you got to be the one for the combination. Jones fainting, throwing a right hand lead. Temporarily stunning McCallum. McCallum shows his chin. Comes back with some other good stuff inside. Pauses to clear his mouth. And we're three quarters away through with a scheduled 12 round. Jones from the corner landed a good right hand inside there. And again. Number 10, coming up, number 10. One of the things that's clear from this fight is that Jones isn't that comfortable when they're in the center of the ring. He's having a hard time working McCallum from the center of the ring, creating openings, stepping in. Because Roy is so quick, he looks to punch and jump out before he can follow up. Yeah, the fight seems to always end up with Jones close to the rope. <laughs> Very interesting, guys. Uh, two of the three WBC judges who seemed early on to be giving the close rounds to Jones gave the ninth round to McCallum, a round in which Jones was dominant in punched at numbers. Landed twice as many punches as McCallum, and yet in that round, two of the WBC judges say, well, let's give it to the guy in the light blue truck. But to be perfectly honest, if Roy, Roy is winning the fight, that's from the appearance of the fight, it's not like he's winning the fight 11 to 1. He's not pitching a shutout. Some of these rounds that he's getting are close rounds because he's laying on the ropes and, and McCallum is doing very well against him in the middle of the ring. McCallum is, he can, if he's going to win this thing, he's going to have to gamble a little bit. You just can't stand out there for the chance of your life. He's going to have to get up, take a chance on getting punched, but get him in and lay that right hand. Incidentally, in case you're wondering, we're seeing the WBC judges' scores round by round. We are not seeing the Florida judges' scores round by round. Those we won't know until the end of the fight if it goes the distance. Oh, really? <laughs> well, usually, Roy is the judge, the jury... The executioner. The executioner, the attorneys, everything. McCallum seems to have no power when he throws the overhand right. Can't do anything with it. But George McCallum was never a big puncher. Even in his heyday, he was a hurting puncher. He beats you down, but he was never a paralyzing puncher. I think his punches have more snap when he goes to the body. He's just a lot more comfortable throwing body punch. He throws that thing over, and it's like he doesn't even have a right hand. Only when he goes underneath. And Roy Jones is not bending over much to make that effective for him. Three! Heavy fellas, come on. Let's make it. Let's work. Referee Brian Gary has been largely unobtrusive here. That's a good job. That right hand almost stopped the McCollum in his track. Wait a minute. Six. The bell has rung. The bell has rung. Gary doesn't know it. Know it. Yeah. Yeah. Do that the count. Here. Okay, Here now he knows. So the first knockdown of the bout comes right at the end of the tenth round. Quick right hand over the top by Jones. Punch at the 
the end of the round. McCallum looked like he was already heading back to the corner, anticipating the bell, but it was a clean punch that sat him down on his pants. I don't think it hurt him very much. The old warrior hanging in there. Get to the way, get the water. Well, that was one of those close rounds that could have gone McCallum's way, but the knockdown seals it for Jones. Exactly. All three WBC judges scored a 10-8 round. So now, unquestionably, at least for the WBC's interim light heavyweight title purposes, McCallum would need a knockout to win. Time! I got time! Time! And there you see Harold Gutterman's side. It's good. Hold on. The same situation obtains, and now referee Brian Gary wants the moisture wiped up out of McCallum's corner. All right, all right, let's go, let's go, let's go. Best benefit any fighter more than the other at this point. Let's go. Yeah, no doubt about it. McCallum got a chance to clear his head just a little bit more. If not, if only just to last this round. Jones still safety first, blocking McCallum's punches with his gloves as he backs up and tries to set himself to fire domination. McCallum still going to the body. McCallum needs a knockout now. You can forget about that body and go, go for everything now. Boy, 39 just isn't what he used to be, huh? <laughs> young is 47. 47 is young. 39 is a little bit troublesome, but then you get you get that second win, don't you? Jones landed a good right hand shot. You get the feeling Jones will continue to look for the opportunity to land power shots, but he just isn't going to risk much. Surely he feels that he's in control of the fight on the scorecards, and clearly he's going to be satisfied to pound out a decision. Which I think would be a, a, a moral victory for McCallum at this stage of his career. And an encouragement to the half dozen or so fighters who might be looking at a Roy Jones fight down the road. Now something has to happen. 39 may become a lively number for the lightweight fighters too, huh? You were great at 39, George. You were tremendous at 39. Do you remember it? <laughs> it was yesterday, you know. <laughs> I'm only 39 now. Great right hand again bothers McCallum. Piston like left foot Jones. McCallum throws him into the ropes. I'm not impressed with your hand speed, young man. He's telling them, don't go flow showing on me now. <laughs> You can tell which house has the Vicks NyQuil and which not. And speaking of scoring, I get it. Well, 11 rounds. Give it, a, give it to us, Harold. Give it to us. Larry, I hate to disappoint you. I got a 109.99, 10 rounds to one, Roy Jones Jr. The only thing I can say is I'm buying this guy a map of New York State so he can find Canistota, where the Boxing Hall of Fame is, unless he hitches a ride with George Foreman. The crowd right now apparently is more entertaining by a fight going on out there in the bleach or someplace. They're not watching as Mike McCallum launches what may be his last assault to the body. And Jones comes back with counter punches to the head. 
pattern of the fight throughout. Valiant effort by 39-year-old Mike McCallum. Solid, defensive, and controlled boxing display by 27-year-old Roy Jones. Jones, we would guess, well ahead on the scorecards of the Florida judges, and we know well ahead on the scorecards of the WBC judges. I tell you, Mike McCullum had a good overhand right. This could have been a different fight tonight. Just has no power on top. Everything is under. Yeah, because the opening was there for the overhand right. He created a good opening by going to the body. He just did not have that finishing power. Jones continually landing that right hand lead now. Middle of the old Ray Leonard polo wind up there. Some of the crowd now turning its attention back to the ring action. Although apparently that fight in the bleachers is still going on. You can see the number of spectators who have their heads turned away from the ring. Roy Jones, Jones is actually looking at the clock. Got to wait this fight out, wait for the last 10 seconds and throw a dynamic story. I, I think he wants to let McCallum finish the fight. I agree. But I'm not sure he could have done anything about it if he wanted to finish the fight early. And when the final bell sounds, you will see one of those mutual embraces drenched in mutual respect. I don't think he wanted to let him finish it at all. You think he wanted to he knock him out? He just had not enough power in the last round. Got him. You see, he has. Why don't you finish? You see, right, he wasn't Gary. waiting. Yep. Yeah. There's the mutual embrace. <laughs> Referee did a good job of stepping in there to protect McCallum as the bell sounded. <laughs> In a general sense, with the WBC judges scoring at the bout. And once again, there are six judges scoring. Three from the WBC and three from Florida because of the head-to-head -head dispute between the two jurisdictional bodies here. So Denkin scores it for Jones, 116-111. Kazmarek scores it for Jones, 119-108. That means 11 rounds for Jones and, and one even. Well, with the 10-8 round, maybe... One round for McCallum and 11 rounds for Jones. And then uh, Barbara Perez with a 117-110 scorecard. And nobody is expecting, quite frankly, that the Florida judges will do something dramatically damaging to the Florida fighters' career. Although, of course, they'll have scored the fight according to their own attack. Ladies and gentlemen, Judge Paul Herman, Judge Jay Cassis, and Judge Rick Bays all scored about 120 107 for the new WBC light heavyweight champion of the world Roy Jones Jr. Jones Jr. That's a white watch. That means that all three Florida judges scored all 12 rounds for Jones with a 10-8 round accompanying the knockdown in round 10. Final punch stat numbers, and you can see that Roy landed 45 more punches. McCallum threw 116 more, thus the big difference in connect percentage. Jones landed considerably more than 50% of his power shots, and of course, a lot of those were leads. Lead left hooks, lead right hands. Now for George Foreman, Larry Merchant, Harold Letterman, and Hector Garcia. I'm Jim Lampley, saying so long from Tampa, Florida. Up there, both large men, six, six and a half and six foot.
heading into this fight? Was it the closest? This would have been the closest fight on the boards in Las Vegas. I, it, it, Akinwande was a narrow favorite, but certainly there were a lot of people that thought Zolkin could win this fight. Akinwande is still a bit of an unknown commodity, and, and Zolkin is a tough, tough guy who can punch, and a southpaw. Okay, what about the winner? What was at stake for him? Well, the winner the winner's going to move up into the, into the real heavyweight ranks. Whoever wins this fight has a real potential of getting a shot at a champion that's not just an alphabet champion, the, the winner of the Tyson Holyfield fight or someone like that. And the loser is going to fall into the also ranks. He's going to have to really fight his way back up. Okay, we're ready for the start of this fight. Let's go to Bob Sheridan at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. Bob? Here we go. Richard Steele signals ring the bell. We notice a knee brace on Henry Akinwande's left knee immediately, so we wonder what that means. When we asked the fighters in the interviews yesterday, we notice also immediately that Alexander Zolkin in the red trucks from Moscow and the Soviet Union, former Soviet Union, I should say, Moscow, Russia, uh, a southpaw leads with that right hand. And so far, Akinwande uh, uh, is allowing him to get in a little bit, but then goes to probably his left jab. I notice one thing also immediately that Akinwande isn't jab, jab, and grabbing. Uh, Zolkin uh, standing straight in front of him, nothing fancy, moves his body a little bit. Uh, these guys uh, look like they want to just stand flat-footed and uh, just go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Of course, this is the very early going here in round number one. This is scheduled for... Oh, my hand sticks through. And Akinwande bounces the head back of Zolkin. Zolkin uh, takes a light shot and just bounces away. He's uh, very aggressive, but notice he's a straight-up European type fighter. The right hand is exactly the way you shoot the right hand right down the middle, and that's the way to beat a southpaw. you got to set it up with your left, though. You try to take the vision away 